Welcome to edisathi.com, your partner in education. In today's lecture, we'll discuss the concept of adjectives and adverbs. Consider this sentence. Tanya is a clever girl. Could you judge what exactly the word clever is doing? Now, if I break this sentence and try and interpret what exactly is the part of the speech of every word, I understand that girl is a noun. And clever is telling you the quality of the noun. It is telling you about the quality of the girl, which is a noun. Again, consider the sentence, he has five mangoes. Now again, I know that mango or mangoes is a noun. And five is telling you about the number of the mangoes, that is the noun. Consider this sentence, there is a little time for preparation. If I read the sentence, I get to know time is a noun and little is telling you about the estimate of time or is it, it is telling you the quality of the time, like how much time is it? It is, the, it is little time. So again, it is qualifying a noun. Now in these sentences, the words clever, five and little are acting to qualify a noun. That is, they're telling you the quality of the noun. Now, what sort of a girl? She's a clever girl. How many mangoes? Five mangoes. What, like, or how many mangoes? Five mangoes. The number of the mangoes. That is, that is, it is qualifying the number of the mangoes. Like with, how much time? Little time. So, the words clever, five, and little are telling you about the qualities of nouns and such words that tell you about the quality of a noun or a pronoun are known as adjectives. So, we've just said that the words clever, five, and little, which are in the brown color, are telling you about the qualities of the nouns which are in the blue color, thus they are Telling they are known as adjectives. So if I have to give a formal definition to adjectives, I'll say these may be defined as the words that qualify the nouns or pronouns. And as we've just discussed, they may tell you about the number quantity or simply the quality of anything. Now, for example, you have a sentence like she is wearing a red shirt. Now, red shirt. Now, here the red color, the red is the color of the shirt. That is, it is telling you about the quality of the shirt. What is the quality? That it is of the red color. Thus, red becomes an adjective for shirt. For example, in these sentences, I say, Sonia is a beautiful girl. Now, again, what is the quality of Sonia? That she is beautiful and she's a beautiful girl. So, beautiful is qualifying girl, thus beautiful becomes an adjective. She has two danglers hanging in her ears. Now, here the word dangler or as we all commonly know it as the earring, uh, it is the noun and we're telling you about the number of danglers, that is two, so two becomes an adjective. So two is basically qualifying danglers, which is a noun, thus it becomes an adjective. Likewise, we have, I really like pink danglers. Again, dangler or the earrings is a noun. And pink tells you about the color of the dangler or it is qualifying you the color of the dangler. So it again becomes an 
adjectives. So we have just discussed that the words that tell you about the quality of any noun are known as adjectives. Now in the given examples that we have just discussed, we could estimate and judge that adjectives not only tell you about the quality that it, that somebody is short, tall, or is he fat or slim or lean or he's honest or good. These are obviously the adjectives. These are the adjectives of the quality wherein he's telling you about what are the personal traits of a person. For example, in a large city, what is the personal trait of the city that it is large? So large is qualifying the city. So it becomes an adjective. As we as like we have beautiful girl. Now, what is the quality of the girl that her personality is beautiful? So beautiful becomes an adjective for girl. Old crow. Now, what is the quality of the crow that he's old? He's telling you about the personal trait of crow that he's old. So it becomes an adjective. The adjectives may also tell you about the quantity of something. Like for example, he, the plate had some rice in it. Now if I say some rice, so what was the quantity of the rice? It, they were some. So some qu quantifies or they are telling you the quality of the rice that, that is they are telling you the quantity of the rice, it becomes an adjective. All wealth, what, what, like how much wealth? It is all wealth. So all becomes an adjective. Little intelligence, again little is an adjective. Or it may tell you about the number as well, like five cows, few cats, each boy. These, these are telling you about the number, so they also become the adjectives. Likewise, they may tell you about the uh, color of something. So if, it, if it is pink, rain, uh, pink uh, umbrella, so pink becomes an adjective. Now, adjectives may be used... Like one use of the adjective is obviously to tell you about the quality of something but they also may be used to compare the qualities of some number of things. Now for example, uh, you are basically comparing two people. So I say Bob is smart. But if I'm comparing the smartness of Bob and Alex and I say Alex is smarter that means the smartness of Bob is lesser in comparison to that of Alex so we may use the adjectives to compare the qualities of few things and based on the number of the comparisons now if I'm comparing one person to himself or I'm comparing it to f different people like two different people like I'm comparing him to just one person or I am comparing him to many different people I'll use a different adjective in each case for example I have the positive degree of adjective which means that if there's one person and I'm telling you about the quality of this person I'll use the positive degree now I say Bob is smart I just said Bob is smart that's it I'm referring to the quality of Bob that what sort of a person is he? He is smart. So smart becomes a positive adjective. Now if I compare Bob to Alex and I say Alex is smarter. Now I am comparing the smartness of Alex to that of Bob. I'll use another adjective, a different adjective which is smarter. Likewise, if I am comparing the quality of Bob, that is his smartness, to the entire population that I know or the whole of the world, that is the entire senses or world, I'll simply say Bob is the smartest boy that I've ever met. Now, this means that if I compare Bob to any person, any boy, he would be smarter than that guy. So I use the 
superlative degree of the adjectives. So, if I'm just referring to the quality of someone, I'm just referring to it, so I'll use the positive degree. If I'm comparing two people or two states, I'll just use the comparative degree. And if I'm comparing one person to the entire known population, I'll say, I'll use the superlative degree of adjectives. For example, Bob is a strong boy. I'm just referring to the quality of Bob. Bob is stronger than Dave. Now, I'm comparing the strength of two boys, that is Bob and Dave. And Bob is the strongest boy in our class. Now, that means I have compared Bob to every boy of the class. Now, the census becomes the class, the boys in the class, and I'm comparing Bob to every and any boy in the class. And I say he's stronger than anybody of them. So I'll say he's the strongest boy in the class. So here we have some examples of how do we use the positive degree, comparative degree and the superlative degree. Uh, for example, the positive degree for good is good, whereas the comparative degree would be better and the superlative degree is best. For example, he's a good dancer. He dances better than Bob, but he is the best dancer in our town. So in the third example, I compared his dancing skills to the dancing skills of everybody in the town. So I say he's the best dancer. Uh, you may also be a little amused to know that it is easy uh, to make the comparative and the superlative degree of any given adjective. Now, if it's, for example, if it's sweet, if I end the word sweet in er, that is I add a suffix er to it, so sweet becomes sweeter, which is the comparative degree of sweet. And if I add the superlative, if I want to make the superlative degree of sweet and I just add the suffix est to it, it becomes the superlative degree. So sweet, sweeter, sweetest. Another example would be rich, richer richest. Likewise, we have little, less or lesser and the least. So least is the superlative degree of little. So if I say I am least interested, that means there might be people who are less interested, but I am among, if, I, if you compare me to them, I would be even lesser interested in knowing something. Likewise, for bad, we have worse and worst, and for far, we have farther and farthest. Now, as adjectives qualify nouns and pronouns, adverbs are the words that qualify a verb, an adjective, or an adverb itself. Now, the latter two, I'll give you an example and get to know, but if for the timing, we assume that adverbs are the verbs that would qualify any verb. So, adverbs are the words that qualify the verbs. Uh, that is, they tell how an action takes place. For example, if I say, Tanya ran swiftly. Now, here the verb is ran. And how did she run? She ran swiftly. So swiftly tells you how was she running. So it is qualifying the verb which is running. It becomes an adverb. Uh, then we have this is a very sweet mango. Now, now in this case, the word sweet is an adjective for mango. Now if I break this word, I get mango as my noun and sweet is telling you the quality of the mango that what is the quality of the mango that it is sweet so it becomes an adjective and now I write very with it now very is qualifying the word sweet it is telling you the quality of sweet that how much sweet very sweet 
since it is telling you the quality of sweet which itself is an adjective it acts to be an adverb thus adverbs not only qualify verbs as in the case of running they also qualify adjectives likewise in this sentence we have bob reads quite quickly now quickly is qualifying reading which is reading is a verb so quickly becomes an adverb and quite is qualifying quickly which itself is an adverb so it also becomes an adverb thus the words that qualify adverbs themselves are non are known as adverbs thus adverbs qualify verbs they also qualify adjectives and they also qualify adverbs themselves uh, a little trick that you can always remember is that any word that ends in ly becomes an adverb but that does not mean that any other word can never be an adverb ly is an adverb suffix but that does not mean that any other word will never that does not end in ly is not an adverb for example very in this sentence very does not end in ly but still it is an adverb uh, the explanation to the given sentence we've just discussed we said that quickly is an adverb for reading and quite is an adverb for quickly so thus quite is also an adverb now we discuss the kinds of adverbs the first kind of adverb is adverb of time that tells you about the time that when did the action take place now for example we have this i have heard this before now when did i heard hear it i hear i heard it before sometime before so this become so here before is qualifying the word heard which is a verb thus it becomes an adverb likewise he comes home daily now here daily is qualifying the word coming which becomes which is and which is a verb thus daily also is an adverb next we have the adverb of frequency it tells you how frequently any action takes place now in the example i told this twice now how many times or how frequently did i tell this i told this twice that is two times so twice is qualifying or it is telling you the number of times telling happened which is an which is a verb so twice becomes an adverb he often makes mistakes now here making is the verb and what is the frequency of making often quite often so often becomes an adverb <coughs> next is the adverb of place it tells you where did the action take place now if i say stand here now the verb is stand where to stand here here is telling you the place of happening happening of the verb so it becomes an adverb i looked everywhere where did i look everywhere now looking is the verb and everywhere is qualifying the verb it becomes an adverb the adverb of manner manner means how the things were done like how frequently or how what was the intensity of doing the thing so uh, if i say look there quickly now here looking is the verb and how to look we have to look there quickly that is fast so quickly becomes the adverb likewise he reads clearly how does he read he reads clearly it, it is telling you the quality of reading which is the verb so clearly becomes an adverb next we have the adverb of degree i am fully prepared now degree means the intensity or the frequency or how like you know what is the completeness of any verb now i say i am prepared now prepared is the adjective am becomes the verb now 
what is the completeness of my preparation that it is full i am fully prepared so prepared is the adjective and fully is telling you the completeness of preparation so fully becomes an adverb i am so glad glad is an adjective for me i am glad right so and so is telling you the completeness like how much glad am i i am so glad so so becomes an adverb the sea is very stormy so stormy is the adjective for sea like what is the quality of sea that it is stormy and how much stormy very stormy so very becomes an adverb next we have the adverb of affirmation affirmation is how how likely is that uh, this action will take place it it tells you about the certainty of some action for example i say surely you are mistaken now i what is the certainty that this person is mistaken it is sure that he is mistaken so surely is qualifying being mistaken so surely is an adverb likewise he certainly needs help certainly is qualifying or it is telling you the uh, affirm or it is affirming the help so it becomes an adverb now there are same words now you'll be curious or you might be thinking by now is that these are the same words which may be used as an adjective as well as an adverb for example uh he spoke in a loud voice now in this sentence loud is telling you the quality of the voice voice is a noun right and loud is telling you the quality of a noun so it becomes an adjective don't talk so loud now in this sentence loud is now qualifying talking and talking is a verb now since it is qualifying a verb it becomes an adverb so in the first sentence loud is an adjective whereas in the second sentence loud is an adverb so the word loud in the first sentence qualifies the noun voice while in the second sentence it qualifies the verb talk thus acts as an adjective in the first sentence while as an as an adverb in the second sentence now same examples uh, there are many examples of the same words being used as an adjective or adverb for example for example rama is a fast bowler now here fast is qualifying the term bowler which is a noun so fast becomes an adjective rama bowls fast that is he bowl here is the verb and fast basically qualifies bowling so it becomes an adverb this is a hard sum now sum is a noun what sort of sum hard sum so hard becomes an adjective he worked hard all day so how did he work what was the mannerism of the work it was hard so working is a verb hard becomes an adverb are you an early riser riser is the noun and early riser early qualifies noun so it becomes an adjective so it is the adjective of quality we started early so when did we start we started early here early is telling you the time of the work that happened that is starting so it becomes the verb of time adverb of time sorry adverb of time he is no better than a fool so here better is comparing him to anybody who is a fool so it's an adjective he knows me better than you here better is qualifying knowing rather than him so it becomes an adverb he is quick to take an offense so here quick is an adjective whereas run quick quick becomes an adverb every little uh, little difficulty ruffles his temper 
Here difficulty is a noun. And what sort of uh, difficulty? Little difficulty. So little becomes adjective. He's little known. Known is a verb. And little tells you about the quality of the verb. So it becomes an adverb. So like these, we have many examples wherein we can say that a same word can be used in two different sentences as an adjective or as an adverb. This gets us to the end of the discussion of adjectives and adverbs.